Okay, and I'm going to let them um, come in. Okay. And we can call the meeting to order. <laughs> um, this is Corrine Burke, co-chair, and I call into order the uh, June 15th meeting of the Needham Commission on Disabilities. And I see we have um, Jeannie here and Dale, um, Debbie, Babs, um, and I forgot our... Officer School Committee? Officer yes, Kelly. Kelly. Kelly, thank you. I can't read from here. <laughs> I know it's far, I apologize. <laughs> um, and in person, we have Carol, myself, and Tatiana. And we have a special guest, um, which is Mark. Is it Glusing? Glusing. Glusing. Who will be starting us off with the first item on the agenda. And Michael Knighton is here as well. Oh, okay, sorry. Didn't Mike mean to Knighton. ignore you. <laughs> Hi, Carol. <laughs> hey, Mike. How are you? Good. So we have a variance uh, request review of the Wyeth Museum. And our the architect is here, Mark. Um, hi, Mark. Would you like to start us off? Hi. Mark, is he on mute? Can you, can you uh -huh. hear us? OK, great. All right, I'm just going to pull up the, um, the documents that you have provided. Tatiana, I could do it too if you want to let me screen share. It's up to you. OK, um, are you allowed to right now? As a panelist, you should be able. Do you want to give it a try? Sure. Uh, it says host disabled screen sharing. <laughs> so why don't you put them up? Don't say okay. time. We'll do. Okay, hold on. Let me try that again. Okay, try there you that. Go. Now it's working. Thank you. Awesome. Give me a second so I don't lose this. There we go. How's that? Good. Very good. Um, I want to start off. This is the why the sorry. This is going to be a, a re remodel this house to create a research center and library for to the study of N. C. Wyeth and his family. This was originally, most famously, uh, owned by Dennis Zerngable, who developed the Pansy adaptation that is sold everywhere here. And it's Needham's Town Flower. He was NCYS grandfather and NCYF lived next door. So there's a nonprofit group that has purchased the house and we want to do the renovations so that we can uh, create this research center. Now, changing from a single family residence to a commercial structure requires some minimum level of accessibility changes. Uh, so I wanted to discuss those with the commission. Um, there, there's a sort of a several step process uh, for us to apply for a variance for some of the issues that I'm gonna talk over with you at the state level and, be, and using the historic status of the building as part of our uh, discussion point, the state Accessibilities Board requires the historic State Historic Commission to weigh in and review our proposal. The State Historic Commission requires us to review the proposal with our local Disabilities Board and our local Historical Commission. So that's your, your step one in our little process of uh, getting a review of this. And I have done a couple of these uh, projects that asked for waivers for uh, the over, overly strong impacts on historic structures or in another case, a small residence that was being converted to a commercial building. And so I always have come to you first to just get your opinion, get some input, um, see if I can get your agreement that it, what we're proposing is reasonable and our, alter, our, our alternate solutions are good ideas uh, that will work given sort of the nature of the use, long-term use of the building. So I will show you this. I'm gonna start actually with photographs for a second. So this is the house itself, a nice snowy day. We remember those. Uh, and then I wanna show an, a view of the house with the rear. The, you can see the photos on the bottom 
this is as you approach the area where we're going to want to install a lift. This is the air, these are, unfortunately, this is almost is the same picture, but we want to install a small lift in this location, which I've rendered here sort of um, in an abstract form, but <clears throat> that sort of indicates what the goal is to have an at grade access to a small vestibule, which you can see in the plans, accessing a lift that would go to the first and second floor. This grade element is approximately four feet below the first floor. It's not a full story. So as you go to the proposal, uh, and I've highlighted and read the areas I think that we will be asking for relief, but the first thing is to build not a full elevator and with its associated machine room. The impact of those can be pretty visually damaging, not damaging, but it's a very strong element to install in a building like this. This is a small two family house, seven and a half foot ceiling, not two family house, a small single family residence, two and a half, seven and a half foot ceilings. It's not a big structure. Uh, we really want to minimize the impact of the access elements that we add to it. And I think it's important to consider also the use, which I will get into a little more. But the idea is that we would not install a full elevator and machine room, but instead use a wheelchair lift. Uh, I would use a larger platform, uh, 42 by 54. Those then don't require the sort of elevator shaft, uh, elevator pit, adjacent machine room that's all fire rated. Uh, it allows us to really create a small access point off the existing grade and use the lift to go up to the four feet to the first floor where we come in, where we come into uh, one of the current rooms of the house. And then the next issue there is that this floor level adjacent and the rest of the main floor of the house is seven inches higher than the Pyle Wyeth library floor. So we have a small ramp that we would like to install. I'm trying to see if we could consider less than the full 10% slope, just so that I can do a smaller ramp that doesn't do as much, take up as much space in the small room or you know, uh, replace as much physical existing fab historic fabric as we can. We, we are suggesting that we, we do realize we need to remove a small wall that exists here so that we can access up to the main entry hall and then the rest of the first floor. Uh, we will create a three foot opening so that we can continue to get through to the other units. Uh, but we do want to preserve the existing original fabric on, for instance, this front doors to the front hall. They are only 30 inches wide. So they're a little deficient in the width but they are not a they're, they're not a requirement as far as getting to the rooms. Uh, you can get to the rooms from this library number two through openings that we will in modify so that they are large enough. Uh, then there are other areas that are private that we would not uh, create accessibility to. Uh, and I go on up to the second floor, the lift, again, we get back on the lift, the lift continues up to the second floor where we have an accessible toilet that we will build in a, in a current bathroom. Uh, the other unique element here is that off of this second floor hallway, time and construction methods in the 1700s have led to the fact that there's about a three inch rise to the Longfellow room from the hall. Um, and rather, and you can see the hall is quite constrained, both in the ceiling element here, the stair. Um, I'll show you a picture of that actually. Uh, this is that second floor hallway. You can see that it's, it's sort of a dormer type space. The rest of the roof line in this space over the be, beyond the stair, and then the room beyond has this low slope that goes down to about three feet high. So, and this is the threshold issue we have that this room is slightly higher. So what we would like to ask for there is 
uh, a, a removable ramp where we would have a sloped uh, ramp up to a, la a landing that you can then turn and go into the room. And it would be removable simply because it's, we can't come up the stair and step over this and step down. So it would be only used when someone needed to get access there that needed that level of assistance. Um, and the reason we think this, we we're proposing these and we suggest that there are, re this is the, uh, go back to the first floor wire through. This is that area where that small ramp would be. What's in that room, Mark? I'm sorry, this is the Wyeth, live Pa Wyeth room. So this is back on the first floor. So that is this ramp here. This, this picture shows going into this corner. So that's the, so we would move this portion of wall to widen that opening and then put a sloped element there so that we can get up to this uh, main I'm hall sorry. and the level of the house. Thank you for that. But I was asking about what will be in room 208. Uh, these are all uh, 208. Let me get up there. I'm sorry. It is a study space. Uh, these are all sort of research rooms for storage of library material, either paper material, books. Uh, there's not a lot of art to be used, uh, displayed here. But the plan is it's not an art museum, it's really a research center. And Mike, you can you know, jump in if there's something you want to add to these. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, sure. as, a, as you can see, it's got a low slope ceiling. It's most likely to be an area where they do some elements for children to study. Uh, maybe it's a little workshop for art things for, uh, for when they have any children that come here. Mm -hmm. But it's not meant as a, as a heavily used room uh, because of the low ceiling at the wall. And, and the ceiling in the center is six and a half feet high. So it is a, you know, it's not a high use room, but we do want it to be public. So I want to make access. Uh, the, the reason we feel like this, these are reasonable approaches is because everybody here is by appointment. It's, there aren't a lot of people studying the Wyeths, but we, the collection that was uh, donated by Mr. Allen is, has a lot of unique elements and elements of interest to someone who would be studying uh, N.C. Wyeth and his family. And so they're trying to create a place, a centralized place where that can happen. But, you know, you, you don't just show up here and walk in and start looking around. It's not that, it's not a museum in that way at all. It's really meant to be a research center where people make appointments. It's sort of like the archive space. When you go to the library, the librarian takes you in, gets you what you want. They show you, they set you down at a table and you do, the, do your study. Uh, so because of that sort of heavily monitored use, we feel like uh, if someone that does need more assistance moving around and gaining access to the various elements can do so with that person helping them if they need it. And the reason for the small lift is just because of the low volume of use. Uh, it, we wouldn't expect that there would be a group of four people, five people trying to get in, needing that level of assistance. Uh, so, but we do recognize that we need to have something that can be there for when there is someone who needs that level of assistance to get in. Uh, but again, it's a low volume. It's seen as it's projected to be a low volume use uh, by appointment, uh, monitored with a docents or dire executive director. And so that uh, we think these solutions are good alternatives uh, and will allow the building to be accessible without doing uh, any significant impact on the historic fabric of the house. So I will, I will Mark, give it I, back. I have a couple of questions for you. On sure. that lift, you said the platform is 40 inches by 52 inches? 54. 42 by 54. Yeah, so it's three and a half feet by four and a half feet. Three and a half by four and a half. Okay. Um, how does that uh, meet ADA uh, accessibility? Uh, I'm thinking of somebody in a, um, a power wheelchair that would come in at one angle and have to turn to go out at a different angle. Uh, is there enough room for them to do that? 
I did review the manu this with the manufacturer's information and it is made, that size platform would work. They tell me that it would work for a power wheelchair like that or, or the little cart, the three wheeled cart, you could drive in and it would make the turn out. Okay, and the, the um, door leading out of the, uh, the lift, uh, how wide is that door? Uh... That's a 36 inch door. They do have, uh, I can work with them and get a slightly larger one if that uh, is necessary. Okay. But it's a minimum uh, of 36. And, and how uh, wide are all of the doors leading from one room to another? Are they all gonna be 36 inch wide doors? We will have at least one door into each room that's 36 inches so that there's an accessible path to the public spaces. Okay. And, and my third question is, uh, you said there was a seven inch rise where that uh, uh, yeah, ramp right. is going to be. Yes. And that ramp as I'm looking at it is, is three feet, eight inches. Uh, it's three foot, six inches wide. And the length is about five, well, length's about five feet, four and a half feet. Okay, and so the, the length, you can see this dash line, that would be the length required for a 10%. So, so the, the rise is not seven inches, it's three, three feet. Uh, uh, no, the rise is seven inches. Seven so. inches. Yes. Okay. So, so a one in 12 would be uh, a seven foot long ramp as opposed to a three foot six inch ramp. Is that correct? Yes. So that's pretty steep. Yes. Yeah, so alternatively, 10% gets us uh, to this line. Um, and we recognize it's steep, but we also know that we, you know, as I said earlier, we, there will be assistance. So someone will be with anybody that needs to use this. Uh, but yeah, I recognize it's fairly steep. We're trying to, again, limit the impact on the historic fabric. If I go back to that room, you can see that's an unusual window style uh, and a, a, a handrail or something across that. I'm trying to avoid that if I can. Are, are you planning to ask for a variance from the AAB to uh, uh, have that ramp shorter than what is required? Yes, yes we are. Okay. But I'm hoping that you, you will agree that, and being residents of Needham and knowing the significance of this house, or I hope getting a sense of it from our explanation that uh, you would agree that that's a reasonable approach uh, given the situation. Try turning the ramp to go along the other wall instead of facing the, the, um, the, the lift. Yeah. Well, it's the, the, it starts at the bottom and goes up to the only, to the entry hall. I'm not- That's the only opening, I guess. Yeah, but if, they, if the ramp went from um, right to left, instead of you know, front to back, does that make sense? Or is that turn would be difficult for people? I think you run into more uh, problems with trying to turn uh, in that area than you would be to extend the ramp to the seven feet. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, so if, you know, if push comes to shove, we'll have to make it longer. But I am, I did want to raise the point and get some feedback from you uh, on this. And we will take whatever your comments are into consideration as we go forward. I have a question. Have you worked with this kind of lift before? We are, the general contractor that we're talking to has done many, several of these. This is a Severio, is what is the manufacturer we're looking at. And, and he's installed several of them. It's proved to be reliable? Yes, I actually, <clears throat> I'm involved with the Needham Historical Society at the Needham History Center Museum. And I designed that building and I was before this board quite a while ago now uh, to get permission to do a Lula lift on that building. And I was just there getting our elevator inspection. And I did speak with, uh, our representative from Delta Beckwith there. And I told him what I was doing here. I was asking him some questions about the elevator shaft or the shaft requirements for this lift. And he asked the same thing, How, what, what, who are you using for a lift or are you, or are you proposing to use? 
And when I told him severity, he said, that's who you want to use. So. Mark, Mark our, our experience with a lot of these lifts is that um, the, uh, the keys were never left in them. And so you had to find somebody with a key to uh, access it. And then if it was up uh, on the, the top level, it was hard to get it down to the bottom level and, and versa vice. Um, I know that uh, where I was a police officer in Dover, we had a lift and uh, they're, they're noisy as heck going up and they're quiet going down because basically all you're doing is, is letting the air or the oil out of the uh, piston as it uh, uh, recedes down to the ground floor. Uh, what Do you know what the plans are, whether they're gonna have somebody uh, uh, accessible with a key or is the key always going to be in that lift? Well, the key will always be in the lift, uh, access to the vestibule to enter the lift and use it, uh, which is basically gaining access to the museum is by appointment. So there will be someone to meet people there, take them in and get them started. Once they're in, for instance, if they're in the Pyle Wyeth library room on the first floor and they want to use the toilet, they, they would be free to get on the lift take it to the second floor, use the toilet, take it, come back to the lift and come down. But again, I, I would expect from our discussions of the operations that there would be someone close by, if not with them the entire time they're there. Well, I, I it's like even the, in this the lift at the oh, town so hall, they- yeah, that, that was actually, Corinne and I had the same question. Is this gonna be like an enclosed, um, lift that has like plexiglass or what, what is what does it look like it'll be enclosed in a in wall with walls because because coming in on the two sides uh it needs to have closed you know because there's an entrance on the one side uh that temporary gate would open out at the second first and second floor those are actually doors so it, it is a fully enclosed lift if Mark, can, uh, can you go back to the exterior shot? Yeah. Of the house or this? Well, this. Right there, because it shows the enclosure. It's a right, wood so it's, in, yeah, it's enclosed in a wood framed and clabbered siding. If you see over here, this was a water tower back when it was uh, the botanist and the florist. It was in full business. And I sort of modeled the structure on that concept of the tower with the band. Uh, there's been more detail added to the to design a, since I did this, but yeah. the idea was to use something that fit the character of what's always been here, uh, but get the scale of it smaller so that it didn't overwhelm this whole back end of the building by trying to do an elevator machine room and still a, a foyer that we need to do because uh, we don't want to build out the a sort of whole entry hall sort of space. Uh, there's also budget issues. This is a nonprofit group. That's uh, a significant increase in cost to try and do a full service elevator. I have two questions. One is if someone has difficulty with stairs, are they able to use the lift as well? Yes. Okay. And the other thing is um, what if a fire breaks out? in the building while someone in the wheelchair is there. Can they get out? Yes, this is not, uh, you know, I think because it's not a full service elevator that has a fire alarm connection and a return to a level, uh, it would be available to use to exit. So this doesn't lock down like in uh, elevators and buildings when they the fire alarm uh, goes off, the, the elevators get locked down to a fireman comes and unlocks them. They yeah. could still access this lift from the second floor and, and just put the down button and go down to the, the ground level. Is that correct? That's, our, that's the plan, yes. I'm going to return this screen to you, Tatiana. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? So you're asking for two variants or three? One for the 
for the lift lift one for, for the ramp three one for the shorter ramp and one for the three inch removable ramp correct yes and and the allowance that the not every doorway <clears throat> in the structure be uh changed to be three feet but that we make sure that there's, there's an accessible entrance to every public room if there are other doors in that room we won't we wouldn't we try not to change those because most of the doors in the main house are original. I see. So as long as there's one entrance to any any given room, public room, public room, thank you, that has a 36 inch uh, threshold, then you wouldn't necessarily want to alter the other entrance to that same room, right? Right. Okay. Uh, and the other, the last thing is there, um, and we did this. Uh, this was actually something that the commission came up with when I did this before at the history center. Uh, some of the doorways, if the, you know, most of these thresholds in an old house are probably an inch high. And so some of them, we did larger beveled thresholds that were permanent, but when they, when that starts to interfere with uh, other elements of the room, like a closet door nearby or something like that, we made a, we proposed a temporary aluminum threshold that had a, low pitch to it, say it was probably 18 inches wide, and it would be placed down over the threshold and the person could go through that doorway using that low slope threshold, but it wasn't permanent because if we left it all the time, then it blocked access for other things going on in the rooms. So that's also included in my request. You're looking for us to give you uh, our blessing on these three variances. Is that correct, Mark? Yes, I am. I, d I need some. Uh, my next step is to go to the State Historical Commission, and they require a review by an accessible accessibility board. That's how they described it in their paperwork. But basically, I would come to you regardless, but that's the, I need that to make that next layer of application. Once they review it, then I will go to the architectural access board. All right. my, my prime concern, I have no problem with the portable ramp and the portable threshold. My prime concern is that uh, three foot eight inch ramp okay. um, there. I would, I don't know that I could support that to okay. be quite honest with you. Okay. I, no, I want. I'm looking for your. You're the first. You're the closest layer of this to to the work on this house, and you know this. Whether this, I don't want to ask the state for anything that you guys aren't in favor of. So. Yeah. Our 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 goal is to make uh, people with physical disabilities. Uh, as uh, independent as possible. And uh, I know you said there'll be people there to help push up a ramp, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And that's not, doesn't meet our goal uh, as a commission on disability. So I would have problems with that three foot eight inch ramp. Okay. Would, would a 10% slope be acceptable? That's just a little bit under the 12. That, that... Is there seven feet or? We you... have the space, but it does impact. I'm just trying to minimize the amount of wall space that it does impact. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, there is seven feet. It will have to modify some of the other plans for shelving and other things in there. But yes. So you're talking about a one in 10 instead of a one in 12? Yes. Uh, I'd have to think about that, Mark. <laughs> okay. okay. We can discuss it later amongst the, the committee commission. Mark, um, depending on, on how the commission votes on this, uh, would you be presenting, would you like us to present a, a letter of support or how would you like us to handle the response? Yes, that would be what I need actually is a letter from the commission stating whichever things they agree or disagree with and uh, we would submit modified drawings to the next layer once we, we're also going to see the historic com, uh, historical commission next week, and if they have any issues that they want me to address, we will make any modifications to those two, based on your 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 input and their input, and then 
push it on to the next level. So I think since Dale has expressed that he will not be in support of the ramp, perhaps you should guys should take a vote by variance request. Mm -hmm. We'll do that later. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Any other questions? Comments? Nope. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. And I want to say thanks much. to Tatiana helping me work out logistics. I'm on a, a board in town that has been doing these remote meetings and I was excited to be able to come in and see everybody, but it turns out that yeah, one, you can one laptop shared by all the people that are in the room. Yeah, as you can see, it's not an ideal and setting. It seemed like it'd be best if I just started from here and projected the imagery. So That's thank right. you. That's right. Yeah, and no, I appreciate your patience, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Thank Could you. I ask sort of a time frame for when are you make a decision tonight or do you? I think we yeah. can make a decision tonight. Okay. Yeah, yeah. and I in, I can follow up with you via email. Um, you know, if you don't want to hang around, um, I can follow up with you via email if you want, but you're obviously welcome to stay. It's a public meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, so number two, um, the co-chairperson's report. Um, discussion future in-person versus virtual meetings starting in September. So I guess it is going to be an in-person, but whether all the members have to be in attendance or can zoom in, um, is that an issue? So right now the, the town is on a standby because uh, we have not received um, official guidance um, yet exactly on, on how we're, or what we're going to offer for meetings. Um, the exemption for the Commission on Disabilities existed even before the pandemic. We just never took advantage of it. Um, so members are able to remote in or call into the meeting um, as long as the meeting is made public, um, as long as uh, the chair is present in the meeting, um, and as long as we're, uh, we are we allow the public to come into the meeting. So um, I think the best that we will do is a hybrid model, mm -hmm. if you will, Kareen, um, where you or Jeannie or both will be present and whoever wants to be in person uh, will be in person. Uh, I'll probably be in person as a town liaison, but um, members have the, the option to continue to um, join remotely. I think that's fantastic, especially yeah. for Debbie right. um, and others that <laughs> would just rather be um, secluded at this still. Yep. Um, I'm all in favor for a hybrid model. I think the only logistics that we still have to work out, and we do, I did confirm that we still have the library community center reserved for the fall. Like, so when we come back in September, um, the only thing that I have to work out is the technology piece, mm. because obviously this is not working. <laughs> And I honestly need a big screen. Yeah, I need a big screen. We have a big screen there. Yes, there is. Project. I just have to figure like out. That one right there. Yeah, yeah, but it doesn't have a camera to like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. we need the camera to project us or maybe I can film with my laptop. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then project that. We can figure it out. Well, the town has to figure it out because <laughs> we're not, you know, we're, right. we're trying to figure out how to make this work not only for us, but for, for other boards and commissions and other internal yeah. meetings. And I know we've had people wanting to join our meeting but couldn't because of yes. their own. This issues. is a good thing. Yeah. It's, it's a good thing. It, it definitely allows I people. Think it's a step forward. Yeah, and and I think that's not only again not only for us but for other boards and committees. The public will probably want to continue to be able to join that way. So, but like I said, there's no official guidance yet, so nothing for you guys to decide. I just wanted to to give you the information that I have as of right now in preparation for that September meeting. The other thing I wanted to mention is the um, the rosemary, the, yeah, the rosemary complex. Yeah, that was that awesome. room was awesome. Right. I mean, if that is available to us, um, yeah. I mean, I can always check on that as well. I know it's really busy, but I can check on that for mm -hmm. sure. Would you Would you prefer to meet there? Is that what we're saying? What do you guys think? Um, I, I like the rosemary one. Yeah. Blue lights. Yeah. I can definitely check with the uh, Park and Recreation Department to see if that room will be available on the times that we need. You, you're talking about the big room, right? The room we were in that one time. It 
it wasn't that big, but and the acoustics yeah. were better, at least Babs thought so. Yeah. Right, that's what I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so you guys talking about the conference room off of the, mm -hmm. as soon as you mm -hmm. come in and off the right. Okay, right. okay. And, and, the other, and the other issue would be sometimes we would have to leave uh, at the library, we would have to leave a little bit earlier mm -hmm. because something would be going on. So yeah, because they always have that and sometimes. Yeah, and then sometimes we wouldn't even be able to have a meeting, I think, in the past because something was going on. And there seemed like more set up and take down there as yeah. well. Yeah. I, th I thought the pool complex had a very nice room the, the one time we had the meeting there. I, I forget why we had to meet there. Was there a conflict? Because some, there, was an, there was a conflict. And okay. it happens like every year for whatever month that was. There's some event at the library. Okay, yeah. okay. Oh, I'm, the, the sale, I think, yeah, the book was, sale. Yeah. And they have to set up in there or something. Yeah, I remember something that. that. Yeah, I can definitely check on the Rosemary Recreation uh, Complex. If it is available, we'll plan to have our meeting there in September. Um, and I obviously you will get the notification when the agenda comes out. And I'd also like to know which members would prefer to be virtual. Um, if given an option. If given an option. Uh -huh. So let me know. <laughs> Genie. <laughs> yeah, well, it's hard to know how I'll yeah. feel in September, probably yeah. different than I do now, but I'm, in June, I'm not ready to be in person. Maybe in September, I will be. Okay. That's fine. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. All right. So are we ready for the next one? Yeah. Um, request for accommodations on Seabed's Way. Is yes. Um, I received a uh, it was a phone call or an email from um, <laughs> actually first from my friend who's a neighbor of this woman who lives on Seabed's Way, who is legally blind, and her unit there has an accessible front door, but the rear of her unit goes out onto a patio. But then to exit the patio, it was quite a big drop. I'm not sure how many inches, six or seven inches. And so she did not feel safe or comfortable exiting her patio, exiting her unit via the patio. So she took it upon herself to put in some cement bricks there and, and, and slope it so that she could exit her patio. Well, the administration of this is federal housing on Seabed's Way. They got very angry. They threatened to evict her, removed the bricks, said she can't do that. According to her, treated her very poorly. And eventually they did their own solution, which was to put a bunch of gravel there, which became muddy and a mess and she still couldn't exit her building. So she was very frustrated, wanted our help. And I contacted, first I tried to get through to MOD and actually no, no one ever got back to me. So then I contacted um, Metro West Center for Independent Living, talked to, oh gosh, I don't have his name in front of me. Oh, but, yeah, you sent it to me too. Um, one of the advocates there, right off the bat, he said, absolutely, we would like to help her. He, not that they can guarantee a solution because he's, he agreed that she did not have the right to make a change in her unit without their permission. Mm -hmm. And he under, not that he understands, but he accepts that they, they shouldn't have threatened to evict her, but they, they did have the right to remove what she had put in. But the solution that they came up with was not satisfactory. It is not a reasonable accommodation. So now Metro West Center for Independent Living is going to help her work with the administration over there to get um, a solution that works for her. That's, you know, some sort of ramping at the rear entrance. Because they said she is, the law says they only need one accessible exit from the building, but it is re the responsibility of housing to provide a second one if she wants it. So that's, this is just four or five days ago. So I'm, I don't think anything has happened yet, but she was thrilled to have someone to speak to and hopeful that she could get a solution. 
Um, Stephen Blay is the person that you spoke to in Metro right. West Centers for Independent Living. So, Jeannie, do we need to write a letter or? Just Not yet. Um, Stephen told me that he would work with her at first, and if a letter was needed from us, he would let us know. Very good. He seems and, pretty optimistic about being able to solve this problem. Can we, uh, we do have to take a vote to empower Jeannie to write a letter on behalf of the Commission on Disabilities if this was needed over the summer while we're on break. So. Um, I like to call. I make a motion. I make a motion to empower her to write a letter. I'll second. Uh, motion. Uh, <laughs> Debbie seconded. Good. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 I just had a quick question. When she exits her patio and uh, she wanted those bricks, where is she going? Where is she yeah, going? To? <laughs> yeah. Um, where does she want to go? It, it's onto a the fire wheel? lane. It's a, it's a road, the, a, you know, a place for cars in the Thank Seabed's you. Way project. I think the okay. tricky thing here is, as I recall, once you change the topography of the land, you have to make the entire route handicapped accessible. Uh, there, and I think that's the sticky point in this whole thing. You just can't make uh, something for her to get off the uh, patio onto the ground safely because um, they're changing the topography of the land there. And that so gets the problematic if they do something other than just put a step in there. Yeah, um, I was sent a photo of the area. I can send it to you all. It looks to me yeah. as though they can do something pretty simply that would fit all those requirements. It would still make it safe and... Um, yeah. Actually, this part of her patio exits onto the parking lot, which is flat. So I think that, you know, there's a little deep, you know, dip there, but she still finds this egress through from her residence much easier than navigating through the building. Uh, to the front door. Um, and I think one of the most, um, you know, one of the most uh, notorious things of the case is that there are um, similar units that do have a paved exit, you know, and we, we were, we asked her to send us a picture of that and I don't think she did, but you know, she has the Metro West now working with her on this, but we definitely thought that if there were other units that had it, that there was no reason why she couldn't have also a paved exit. Yeah, it you just know? seems their reaction was excessive. I think there's more history there, perhaps, but um, but yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay, so next uh, we have save the date, level up to equality webinar, understanding effective communication on 710 at 11 to 1215. Just want to make sure that was everyone's Radar. Did everyone receive that invitation? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. And the link to register should be right in the email as well, right? Yeah. So next would be review of our minutes. Okay. I'm going to shift gears from one minute to the other minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, so this is the Native Commission on Disabilities meeting May 18th, 2021, yeah. virtual Zoom meeting. Present, Jeannie Martin, co-chair, Corinne Burke, co-chair, Carol Thomas, secretary, Tatiana Swanson, town liaison, Manny Iyer, member, Kelly Scopanetti, police department liaison, Debbie Heller, member, Julie Muse Fisher, school department liaison. Absent, Babs Moss, member. Uh, 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 I don't know this is gonna sound so late. Oh, yeah. oh, that's I, right, I'm, that's right. I, I, yep. I came a half an hour late, I was there. <laughs> I, yep. <laughs> Okay. We only have abs and bads. How could we forget you, Babs? Yes, I. You want to get credit? Yes, I'm sorry. I do this at the beginning, and I forgot to make the update. Thank you so much. I am sorry. I've got it correct. Thank, th thank you very much. Yeah, no problem. Okay, co-chair person's report. Update on boards and commissions online course. Corinne reported that this training was quite extensive and was a couple of hours long. There is a lengthy guide for members of public boards and commissions that Corinne will share with the commission via email. Library access issues, sign needed, question mark. 
There was an advocacy call regarding access issues at the Needham Public Library. There were several issues raised. These included the blocking of the curb cut and the automatic door opener that was not working properly. The caller needed assistance from the library staff to open the door. The caller felt like the focus of the library staff was an attitude of don't come in versus helping. Karen spoke to both the library and the caller. Both were very cooperative. One suggestion made was that a public service announcement may help. Tatiana will draft a letter to the director of the library with our input, which includes the following potential solutions. Traffic cones placed in the fire lane to discourage parking, an alternate drop box, and a designated parking space for five minute drop off pickup. Kelly will also check for a no parking sign that could be placed by the fire lane to reinforce the no parking. A second adv advocacy call was received from, resi from a resident about access issues at the Rosemary Street Office Park, 145 Rosemary Street, Building V1, Needham Orthopedics. There is a ramp with no handicap button on the door. The ADA does not require automatic door openers, but does require that the building is accessible. Debbie will send a letter asking about their plan for access. Tatiana will send Debbie the intake form. Carol made a motion to send a letter that Corinne seconded, motion passed unanimously. Invite the new select board members to the NCOD meeting. As the next topic, Jeannie shared that Marcus Nelson posted in the Needham Facebook that he wanted to attend all commissions and board meetings to learn more about their work. Manny also talked with Lakshmi Balakandra about the NCOD and our role in the community. Tatiana will work with the town manager's office to invite them to our June meeting. Review of the minutes of April 20th, 2021 meeting, the minutes were read and Corinne made a motion to approve that Debbie Heller seconded, the motion passed unanimously. Three, EDA liaison report. Update on a citizen concerning about truck idling. Tatiana met with a resident who lives in Greendale regarding excessive truck idling. She was bothered by the noise and fumes. She requested a meeting with the Board of Health. The meeting is set for May 24th and will be attended by a number of town health and public works employees. Jeannie will attend from the NCOD. B, update on advertising for NCOD member opening in Compass. Following follow-up discussion took place about posting the opening in the Compass newsletter. After a follow-up call, the Council on Aging confirms that the opening will be published. It will be promoted in the next edition that is published quarterly, which will be in September. Four, updates. School committee. Julie shared that there were no specific updates. Needham had a surprisingly good year considering all the challenges and pivoting required with COVID. The last month of school is approaching. She said there is a grant request in process that may not be ready until the fall. HP parking. Update on the list of HP parking spots in town. Kelly spoke with John Kramer. She shared that from January 2019 to December 2019, there were 22 violations. In 2020, there were only five violations, which makes sense based on COVID. Concern regarding parking at DeFazio. Carol shared that people were parking at the spot Carol parking at the DeFazio next to an HP parking spot in a way such that anyone parking in the handicapped spot would then block them in. Kelly let us know that any parking violations could be reported to the Needham Police Department non-emergency line 781-444-1212. No updates from Debbie, still waiting on the AAB report regarding Bertucci's. C, diversity initiative. NDI has posted the one year anniversary of George Floyd's death on May 25th on their website. This includes a thought-provoking reflection posted by a board member. D, downtown streetscapes emergency planning. No new updates. Dale shared via an earlier email that there was no meeting of the downtown streetscapes committee in May, and the May meeting for the LEPC was canceled. E, other new business update on the Needham Reservoir Trail concerns. Kelly visited the access trail and determined that the only missing rope appears to be for DPW access. They need to be reminded to retie it. Kelly will remind DPW to retire it after they are done with their work. Five, planning for the next NCOD meeting June 5th, 2021. Other business. Manny tested the NCOD website and couldn't read the PDFs. Tatiana will research since Manny should be able to access the PDF files. Manny reported that it is also difficult to navigate headings, um, that it is also difficult to navigate. Headings would be helpful to navigate. Manny shared that the WWW Apple uh, viz.com is an example of a website that works really well for the visually impaired. Manny will share at an upcoming meeting. Meeting adjourned, 6.46 p.m. Respectfully submitted, Carol Thomas. Motion to accept the minutes. I move to accept the minutes as read. Uh, uh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No pause. Nope. <laughs> 
Um, school and then for the grant. Yeah, okay. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's up to you. Do you want me to do my update? Yeah, why don't you Okay. Um, um, so, okay, so we did invite the, um, the members, of, the new members of the select board um, to the meeting, but uh, unfortunately they weren't able to make it. Um, I believe Manny had also extended up a personal invitation to uh, Lash, Lash me, but, um, but they weren't able to, um, to attend. Um, Manny said he's going to do his demonstration in September now because he he's, wasn't able to attend today's meeting. Um, and I'm sorry, Debbie, I totally forgot to send you the form. I just forwarded it to you. Uh, so you'll have, you have it now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have an update on the library access issues that, um, that we, that we discussed last, last meeting. Um, I didn't write a letter because they have been addressed by the library. Um, we did, I, I spoke to the director of the library of the public library and McFaith with regards to the complaints that were made and, um, and they had internal training of, on the, um, on, you know, on the, the inter, interaction between this library staff and the member of the public. Um, yeah, virtually moving the, um, the, the drop-off, the book drop-off that is causing all the, um, all the issues, it's impossible. They actually have discussed it with architects and engineers in the past and there is really no place to do it. Um, they are putting a big sign <laughs> next to the drop off um, to remind people to not idle uh, in front of it uh, because it, you know, it, it, it blocks the curb cut and they use their own social media and the town social media to promote this um, with their patrons. So um, I felt like the items were addressed, you know, mm -hmm. they, they, they quickly responded to the issues um, I did ask about cones and some of the other things that we discussed at the last meeting. And she said that cones, nothing that obstructs people from parking there could actually be feasible because it is a emergency lane. So if there was an emergency, they had to leave that open for, you know, for, for, um, for the police or fire to get in. Um, so she, you know, she, she, she understands, um, you know, that that is a problem because, a lot of times people have kids in the car, they don't want to take the kids out. They just, you know, they just ran out. Um, but obviously we know that these are not people simply dropping off books because the vehicle that blocked this person from coming into the library was there for a while, right? It had to have been if, because I'm just thinking, if you see someone who's struggling and you're blocking their path, you would move your vehicle. You would think. You would think. But maybe, so in my mind is someone who actually, Double parking got out yeah. of the right. library. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'll wait till you hear what I saw the other day. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. There was a woman there and I was like looking at her. And so she finally responded because I was like looking at why was she parked there? And she said to me, Oh, I'm just finishing my book before I return it. <gasps> <laughs> no way. And you know, if they're looking down at their book, they're not looking up to see what's going on. Yeah, so I, I decided it wasn't my battle to fight. So I just. You know, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Oh my goodness. And you know what? I've, I've, you know, my daughter's old now, but I've done it. I know, I know I've done it myself. Right. So what we need here is education basically for the public. So they, the library is addressing it. They're putting a big sign They're You know, right. they're, they're putting signs inside the library, I think too. I think she said inside the library, but, and we're using social media and, you know, their email blast into their Patreon. So hopefully, hopefully we that'll get, help. yeah, that'll help. I think. What about the, um, the note, if the, automatic door doesn't work to call a number and we had did discussed we discuss that? that i think she did say that there is a there is a sign there okay. i have to i have to follow up on that one but i thought she said there was there was already a sign there okay. to call the number but I, I can i can double check on that um, um the, the, the door being heavy to open and close can't they adjust that the pressure well it meets standards because you know, oh, that, are you we, we've measured the, it in the past. The Rose, Ridge. Yeah, no, no, the uh, library. library. Right, so the, the person complained that the, but the door doesn't meet standards. So. Yeah, no, the door wasn't working. 
right? Right. That's why. The yeah. That's yeah. why oh, that person was trapped difficult. between the best and the best vestibule. But yeah. Uh, under the face, you uh, fa the face. Am I saying that right? Yeah, Nina right, yeah. yeah, the face. You uh, handicap parking blocking issue. Yeah. Um, I told you guys that I actually had an event there. Um, so I could go out and, and, and witness the layout of the, of the parking. And it is unfortunate because it's the closest to the gate. So you can see why people are sort of parking there. But thanks to Carol, who sent us pictures <laughs> that were timestamped, we were able to do some digging and find out who was the culprit. Oh dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and that person was sternly addressed by, um, by the director of... Um, school programs because it was I guess a school sponsor sport yeah yeah well, Carol well, I, I see that car there because I recognize it. I walked with my mom who's yeah handicapped and she um you know and so I can see that the behaviors change so yeah. Was, yeah and so you know I hadn't really heard back from them so when I followed up I was like hey I'm wondering if you know have you reconsidered reconfiguring the parking lot and you know one of my one of my staff from DPW said what do you mean? Has there been another issue? Because that person was addressed and I was like, oh, no, no, I didn't know. It's just like, yeah. you know, and uh, and they say regrading is a really obviously an expensive and time consuming. And right now going into the summer is really not a good time for them. As with everything, town projects of that magnitude have to go through the, you know, the capital cycle. So right. they figure education is probably mm -hmm. going to do it. And, you know, right. Luckily. Yeah. And there's no signs. I now know that there's supposed to be signs. Yeah. You probably noticed that. Yes. So. Yeah, so thank you for that. Um, and then finally, we did have the meeting with the with the citizen that resides on Greendale Ave, who's concerned about truck idling and um, pesticide use by the town. Um, the meeting was attended by the Board of Health Director and um, the Board of Health, I'm sorry, the Board of Health Chair and the Director of Health and Human Services, the Director of DPW, which is public right. work, the Superintendent on Highway, um and wow. myself and wow. um we you know we we listened to the um to the complainant uh to the uh to the resident um and her, and her concerns about the truck sidling um and all of that so it, it sounds like she's had a few run-ins um with trucks idling um outside her house which she you know she she suffers from certain disabilities environmental um chemical disabilities chemical. i guess where where things that you know you don't really think about but like asphalt construction materials exhaust from vehicles uh pesticides um affect her affect her health directly in a in a greater and quicker manner than would the rest of us and so um so a couple of things so we talked about the fact that that you know idle there is an anti-idle law in the state and if she feels that someone is breaking the law she should call the police um, she did know that she had called the police on two occasions that they had not shown up at her house after the complaint. Um, so obviously the town would like to address that if that is the case. Um, but then the two things that came out of this is that what she's looking for the town to do is for, it's for the town to give her advance notice of when construction will happen, which I think the public works director said, if there's major construction happening, yes, for sure, notification goes out to all residents um, with at least 48 hours, just so people can plan and are aware that's going to be noise, there's going to be perhaps traffic rerouted and all of that. However, the job that particularly was upsetting to her was so small that it's not something that you actually necessarily schedule. They were just cleaning a catch basin. Mm -hmm. So it's not something that you would necessarily send letters out or, or notify residents about, but of course, and of course, with the new turnover of leadership over there, I think, you know, and, and the superintendent of water being on vacation, nobody knew to let me know, to let her know. So I think what we tried to say is that um, um, for, for bigger projects that are going to be happening around her house, the DPW is working on, a, on an initiative to try to map those out with GIS. So it'll give us a better sense of when things are happening around her so that proper, so that notification can be obtained but she does have to bear with the smaller type of jobs that, that are, you know, sort of non-scheduled. They're just, you know, regular maintenance done on the town. As far as the pesticides, the, the, the Health and Human Services Board and Director 
uh, are going to work on an initiative to sort of put out more guidance and education to the community um, regarding which pesticides are deemed safe and which, because I didn't even realize this, but there are some pesticides that are very harmful that they that that meet the minimum standards, so they are sold in stores and 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 of course she's overly sensitive and we wanted to let her know we wanted to ensure that that the expectation was understood that the town has no jurisdiction over the actions of private citizens and what they do in their private residence um, we can't stop people from constructing on their own homes or you know um, adding additions to their houses or improving their houses or property, and we cannot control what they put on the soil. However, we can educate the population as to what better alternatives there are, I guess, for pesticides and chemicals used in lawns and, and, and yards. And so that's what the Board of Health and the Health and Human Services Department is going to work on. So not 100% resolution, but some resolution. <laughs> um, uh -huh. Mistakes are going to be made. Yeah, mistakes are going to be made. It was, I guess that was the message. Mistakes are going to be made, but but we, we want her to know, we, we hear her, we understand the concerns. We have limited power in what we can do, but, you know, but education and better tracking is going to be at the forefront of this. And I will continue to communicate with her on any issues that are um, relevant to her situation. So um, can I give you a heads up? I think the house across the street from her was yes. sold, and I think it's going to um, be uh, knocked down, and an another renovation is going to happen. Yeah, and but you know what, Babs, this is Needham. Renovations will continue to happen. So okay. and I, she lives on a busy street, and she has a lot of. So she's on a corner lot. So she has two streets that she has to deal with if there's construction. Um, yeah. So I know what you're saying, and, 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 and like I said, it is going, I feel like it's going to continue to happen, like these this sort of calls and, and, um, and advocacy requests. But, you know, we, 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 we can, I think what we wanted to say to her is whatever the town can control, we'll control, you know? That's very good. Yeah, we'll do our best. Yeah. So did it leave on an up note? I think so. I think so. I mean, it's, 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 she's definitely very prepared to speak about her condition. She's done a lot of research on the matter. Um, she was well prepared for the meeting. Um, I, I, I'd be the first, first one to tell you she has very valid claims. It's just that when you live in, a, in an environment where these aggressors are constantly around you, there's very little that we can do because we cannot control what fertilizers you use in your lawn. Like the town doesn't have that kind of our jurisdiction. Nor should it. No, no sure. Exactly. Yeah. A lot of people will probably agree that we shouldn't be dictating what that <laughs> what that looks like. But yeah. <laughs> yes, actually you're right. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're up to updates. Uh, school department, Julie's not here. Um, so I'm gonna skip over to the handicap parking update on the Rosemary Street office park. So um, the letter wasn't able to be sent because um, yes, Debbie did not have the the template. Was it? Yeah, the the, the intake form, the intake the form. Con the contact. The and I apologize. <laughs> um, did any, did anyone go over there to check the how much pounds of pressure it took to open the door? Oh yeah, Jeannie, you say you had a tool. I thought I did. Oh. I have not been able to locate it. Jimmy! <laughs> Dale, mute yourself, please. <laughs> <laughs> he got excited. Um, so maybe um, one of us should do that once the tool is, is located. Or do we need another one? Should we purchase one? <laughs> Gee, Andy. Um, I, I believe I believe we do have uh, we do have one here. Um, if anybody wants to take it and you know go go measure the, the doorway, I can do it. Yeah, but I think it's right around the corner from my house. Oh, perfect! After the meeting, then I can just hand it to you. I believe it's downstairs in my old office. Okay, show me how to use it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know how to use it, but we can figure it out. <laughs> okay. 
I think um, we, I used to use it, but I forgot how to use it because it's been I think it's just so you long. push with it. Yeah, and he, and he has a little measure. Sorry, my my nails. He has a little measurement um, of of um, of the the pump the pressure on the door. I know we used it for like the Sunita Williams and the the Jack Coxwell right. building. Right. Um, so I should still have it, but we can we can go look after. Um, let's see what's next. Diversity. Um, there's not really much new other than that we did absorb observe the um, the the uh, George Floyd's death on Tuesday, May 25th, from 5:30 to 6 p.m. at the town hall on the steps of the common. There was um, an observance. Uh, Year of reckoning will be coming. So I wasn't able to attend. I don't know if anybody else did, but that's the latest. Okay. Downtown st streetscapes. Okay, there was no downtown street trade meeting uh, this month. And the uh, local emergency planning committee meeting, the entire meeting was dedicated to getting input from all of the members as to how the uh, informational website uh, was working, whether people were pleased with the amount of information that went out on the COVID-19 uh, uh, progress here in, in Needham. And uh, when they asked me, I had to admit that uh, I hadn't been into the website. That I got all my information from the newspaper, so I couldn't give a, a pro or a con as to how the website was working. They also uh, want to know whether people had any feeling about how the rave uh, system in town uh, was working. And, um, the census seemed to be that uh, it was something that had to be used sparingly, that it couldn't be used uh, uh, all the time because then people would ignore it. Yeah, but uh, there was a, about all that went, went on with the meeting. Okay. So um, I guess now we could discuss the um, the uh, variance request. Variance request for the um, Wayif Museum. Okay. My my input uh, would be that I can support the portable uh, ramp and the portable uh, threshold. Okay. Uh, so everyone is in agreement with that. Can everyone support that? Yeah. Yes. All right. I cannot support the the um, uh, three foot six inch ramp, and I don't even think I can support a one in ten uh, slope. I, I think it would be a dangerous precedent for us to set uh, if we um, support this variance, and then somebody else with the variance and we uh, don't accept theirs. Uh, I know I have been to the AAB and spoke against the variance and the AAB ruled against uh, the Needham Commission on Disability and granted it. So if we don't support it, it doesn't mean that it's not gonna get approved by the AAB. I just don't think we as a board should do anything to support something that doesn't meet uh, AAB requirements. Um, anyone in agreement with Dale? Yes. <laughs> Debbie? I am oh, I think there was so based on kind of Is it based on the kind of house? Yeah, that the historical society is in. She thought their request was reasonable. Is that what you said? Okay. Based on the kind of house it was in. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. And do you guys vote? I, I do vote if this need for it. Okay. So, um, is there anyone who disagrees with Dale, I guess, will be the question. Well, what is how the one in 10, it's really hard for me to visualize how one in 10 is different than one in 12. I know it's 
how many feet what, of, what, what it is more, what it is, Jeannie, have, is for every inch of rise no no i know that i'm wondering mark in terms of the space how much more room are you giving up to go one in 12 versus one in 10. About uh, 16 inches. Uh, it's re it really has more to, the request has more to do with the location of the window than the ability or inability to do that. <laughs> but if, if the commission would prefer a compliant ramp, uh, we're certainly willing to figure out how to do that. Okay. Um, the, the one issue I did want also, you hadn't spoken yet about the lift itself and that option. So that would be our other question. <laughs> I'm okay. Yeah, we to me yeah. that you can't go before the AAB for that variant, so they may grant it to you. I just don't think as a commission, we can support that, that particular variant or should support that particular variant. And what about the lift? I'm okay the lift. with the lift. I'm, I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. So if no one disagrees with Dale with regards to the um, to the ramp, then you can maybe you can take a vote for the for the request that says minus the ramp. Right? Yeah. So let's take a, it's a vote. Yep. Um, to accept all the variants except for the ramp. Aye. Aye. <clears throat> Aye. Aye. <laughs> Any oppo opposition? That's okay. So to clarify, the, the, the commission just voted to support the, the variance request for the lift, the removable ramp, and the access to door to to rooms where more than one opening is available that does have the three feet uh, widening, at least, one. at least one widening entrance. Um, and the um, the commission uh, is currently not going to support um, the one in 10 um, rice ramp for the house. And we'll send a letter to them. Yeah. Okay, anything else? <laughs> Any comments from Mark or Michael on this? Uh, th yeah, thank you very much. Uh, that's, uh, we appreciate the input and the review and we will take a second look at the round. Thank you so and, much. And thank you. Uh, we look forward to having you to the new uh, library. Yes, yes. We'll find a reason to do some research. <laughs> 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 thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So planning for the next meeting. So that Week. will be September 21st. 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 Yes. Wow. And Manny um, hopefully will be able to make his presentation. Yeah. And then we'll have to resolve about how we do the hybrid thing. Sorry, I kept them here the whole meeting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I think so what happened before when, when they came to present on that is that the people would, on their own, leave the meeting. Uh -huh. But I don't think we asked them to leave. And I was like, but it's been so long since we met in person that I, I had to check with someone. I'm like, wait, what is, what's the rule? But no, you can't ask. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. We got it. We got it through. Um, well, so, go ahead. I, I thought I was kind of I'm feeling uncomfortable about it, too. I wondered, aren't they expected to leave so we can discuss it without yeah. them? Yeah, that's what it is. So I asked that. So I had to ask, uh, I had to ask someone here in, in, you know, from work because um, actually. I think there was some confusion because they said, uh, uh, will you vote on it today? And, and uh, uh, I don't think we were ever told them that uh, we'll vote on it, but it, it's going to be a, a private vote. And uh, uh, we appreciate your presenting yeah. to us, but you need to leave the meeting. Yeah, well, I, I don't know that that is missed. I don't know that that's that yeah, we're allowed to do that. Up. We're going to wrap the so meeting can, up and then we can continue just um, so we can stop the recording. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I call this meeting adjourned and anybody second that? <laughs> you can make a motion to <laughs> motion. To, uh, I'll second I, it. I, I, <laughs> thank you. Thanks, everybody. 
All righty.